those area. Okay, so what we said, it's not as deep a principle as integral as accumulation of a quantity, but still important for geometric purposes. Still important for geometric purposes. Maybe I need to put that whole thing before on a, on a PowerPoint so you start taking notes on all that stuff too. All right. So, so here now we have a new type of question, right? It's not about rate of change and accumulation. So now we want to find the area bounded by y equals 5x minus x squared in the x-axis. And there's no formula for this, right? There's no formula like there's a formula for a triangle or a ellipse or something like that. 5x minus x squared is parabolic. So the first thing we need to do is on simple, simple equations like this, simple functions, you really should have a little bit of ability to sketch these without a graphing calculator. So I'm going to go, so there's maybe a few different ways to approach sketching this. I'm going to show you one way, but you've got to have a way. I think on the second, on this next exam, no graphing calculators. So you're going to have to, you're expected to know how to graph things like this. Okay. Um, now, when things get more complicated with uh, you know, exponentials and, and more complicated polynomials, then no, then it would be appropriate to use a graphing calculator. But lines and parabolas and simple trig <coughs> functions, you should be able to sketch those quickly. So here's one way to, to do that. First thing you can do with this particular one, because there's no constant term, we could factor out x and get this as a factored polynomial. And why is that helpful? What did I just find by doing that? Change the graph. Zeros, right? Or roots, right? So I know that when what values of x make y zero? Zero and five, right? Okay, so zero, I got zero, zero, and five, zero. Okay, next. So, and I know it's a, I should, you should know it's a parabola because it's a quadratic, right? So when I look at this 5x minus x squared, the, the, the sign of the coefficient of x squared will tell us which way that opens. Does it open up or down? If, I, if, I take it, if it's negative x squared or negative some coefficient times x squared, remember that those open down, right? That, that will open down. And so if I've got two points and I know that it opens down, that's enough to make a sketch. That's enough to make a sketch. So it opens down, so something like this. Perfectionist that I am hates this picture. I'll live with that. Okay, so it opens down, it goes through zero, zero, and five, zero. Okay, so it's talking about some uh, region bounded by that and the x axis. So, my experience teaching this class and doing these is you. Students do not really read carefully, or they're not co comprehending what they're reading, and they just, once they get the picture, they just gravitate to some region, whether it's the one described or not. Because some of these pictures will have, there'll be more than one region possible from the function and the axes. So you really got to, you got to uh, hone in on what exactly is the one described. And so just before we start, what is y equals zero? What is that? Another way to say y equals zero on a graph. You said x-axis. Agree with that? Is it the y-axis? Have have thousands of calculus students throughout the ages said that was the y-axis? Yes, but it's the x-axis. Okay. 
right? It's all points where y is 0. Where are all points where y is 0 on the x-axis? Okay? What is x equal 0? You can get that one right now. Okay. So first of all, let's get that settled. Two different ways to say the x-axis. They could say y equals 0, or it could say the x-axis. Two different ways you could say the y-axis. It could say x equals 0, or the y-axis. All right? So now we're looking for the region between the x-axis and this, and that's, in this particular example, that's easy to find. It's really hard to screw this one up. But, like I said, don't just make the picture and just look at the picture and assume that it's where your eyes are going. You've got to read these descriptions carefully, okay? You've got to read these descriptions carefully. Okay, so we got that. And so we want, uh, we want to find that area, right? This is not an area you can find in a ge geometry textbook, okay? So, but we can use what we just talked about. So before we go to an integral, I, so this is an easy one. We could probably just write down the integral first. But I want to uh, instill in you a habit, or try to. Again, my experience in past semesters is like students, many, many students will just blow off what I'm saying in this next part. They just want to just write the integral every time. But when we get into these harder geometry problems and then the physics problems, what I'm about to do is going to be really, really helpful. So I just implore you, okay, as your teacher, who knows this a little bit better than you, please do this, okay? <laughs> so what we're going to do is I'm going to come up with, so we know that that area is made up of a bunch of little, like, rectangles or, like, little uh, strips. So I'm going to draw one strip that's typical of all of them, right? So I'm going to call that a typical strip. Again, for this example, we don't need to do this, but I want just just get in the habit. And so when things get hard, this is going to be a really important tool. All right, so this is a typical strip. And what do we want to do? We want to sum up all the areas of all those typical strips. So let's just find the area. So we call this, so the area of a typical strip. We can call delta A. <coughs> and so... It has a, so it's just going to be, an, this is just a rectangle, it's just going to be height times width. So uh, base times width. So what's the base? That dimension right there, delta x. Okay, so it's base times height. Sorry, not base times width. Base times height. And the base is delta x. And what is the height? So this dimension here, we're going to ask the question. When we get all these challenge problems. Geometry problems. Is it an x coordinate, a y coordinate, a change in x, or a change in y? So that height of that typical strip. Is it an x coordinate, a y coordinate, a change in x, or a change in y? So if you said something to do with y, that's a good first step. So now the question is, is it just a y coordinate, or is it is it a change in two different y's? There's a y coordinate, right? Y coordinate is the distance from the x axis. So this, this distance right here is simply a y coordinate. Do you see that? It's the y coordinate of the parabola. So we can write this typical strip as delta x times y. So the question we're going to ask over and over again when we come to these, these dimensions is it an x coordinate or a y coordinate, or is it a change in x or a change in y? In this case, we can just we can just say it's a y coordinate, which is a change in y, but it's the change in y from zero. So the change in y from zero is always just a y coordinate. So our typical strip is just delta x times y. And now, if we if we have delta x, we need to get the whole thing in terms of x. So how can I write y, the y coordinate, in terms of x? It's the y coordinate on this parabola, in terms of x. The, it's the rule, 5x minus x squared. And so now I've just found my area of my typical strip.
from base times height. The base being delta x, the height being the y coordinate, which I rewrite in terms of x. <clears throat> okay, now we're ready to write the integral because what, is, what does the integral sign mean? It means sum, right, sum up. If we sum up all the typical strips, then we'll get that area, right? So we're going to sum up the typical strips. Starting from x equals, so we're going to start with our first little strip is over here. x equals what? Zero. Our last little typical strip is over here on the right side. x equals five. And then we're going to sum up all of the typical strips, which are 5x minus x squared. But now the strips are getting really, really thin, so dx. Again, yes, we could have probably on this one just started by writing that down. It's a really easy one. But this thing that I've done in red, just I'm telling you, if you do it when, we, when, it, the, when the problems get hard, and you know the hard ones are going to be the ones on the exam, this is going to be an important tool. Okay, This is going to be a really important tool for setting up the integral correctly. So now this is going to be the area in question. Now, so now we have an integral from 0 to 5. Whether it means rate and accumulation or it means area, we still can use the fundamental theorem. It's, a, it's still the integral. So whether this is a rate function and we're finding the net change from x equals 0 to 5 or if it means area, getting the answer is the same thing. So that's, that puts that emphasis on antiderivative again, right? Antiderivative is the key to getting a value. So antiderivative. Super easy. So whether it's an area representation or a net changing uh, representation, it still it still can be you still use an antiderivative to do final minus initial, right? So final value minus initial value. Same as the sum of all these. Okay, so what is this? 25, 125, 125 over 2, minus 125 over 3. In this case, the 0 becomes 0, but that's not always true, right? So minus 0 plus 0. And I think that's 125 over 6. where we just found that area that I shaded in blue. <clears throat> okay, anybody have a question on that? Okay, so what about the same question now, but what if I went from 0 to 8? So let's take a look at that. Last chance, questions on this? Yeah, please. Um, when you get the function from the side of the integral, mm -hmm. will that always be the original one? Or is it no, so, so it depends on the depends on the, the, orient, the configuration of the region. That's why, that's why we went through this, this step right here. It just happened to be that the height was just the y coordinate, so that was the function. But that, that, could, be, that could be like a change in y. Or it could be a change in x or an x coordinate, right? So that's the key to this step. So don't always just, it's, it's only that function if that thing is y, right? Okay. If it's something else, then it's not gonna, it's not gonna be that. And we'll see, we'll see lots of examples. Good question. Other questions? Okay, so now I wanna talk about from 0 to 8. 0 to 8. So let's look at a picture of that. So here's a picture of that. So here's the same picture of 0 to 5. So what happens after 5? This function turns negative. Okay, so instead of saying find the area of such and such a region, now this question is: Here's this integral, and in this situation, what does it calculate? What would it mean? <coughs> what? 
Well, let's go back to accumulation and rate of change. What would it mean for if this was if we were looking at this through the lens of accumulation and rate of change, what kind of function would this purple function be? Relative to that integral, 0 to 5, 5x squared minus 5x minus x squared. What kind of function would that be right there? You should be thinking rate of change function. That'd be rate of change function. That's right, rate of change times change in x, sum them all up. So if this is a rate of change function, and so what would that meaning of that whole integral be? The meaning of that whole integral relative to that rate of change function would be okay, accumulation of some quantity whose rate is 5x minus x squared as x goes from 0 to 8. And what's going to happen to that quantity? So tell me what's happening to the quantity as I change x. Ready? What's happening to the quantity? Increasing, increasing. What's happening to the quantity now? Still increasing, now decreasing. And this integral has that all built in. So when, it, when, you, when this integral, you calculate this integral, it's going to take into account increasing all through here, and it's going to take into account the fact that it's going back down here. So what would you guess for a value of this integral? What would you guess for a value of this integral? Maybe negative. Do you see that? Because maybe the amount of accumulation here gets overtaken by the amount of deaccumulation in this part. But it might be close to zero, right? So, so you see we have this increase till 5, then we have decrease till 8. Okay? So when you interpret this as area or geometrically, the same thing happens. It's like we're accumulating area here, but then what's going to happen? Are we going to keep adding on area? No, it's going to, it's, because it's the same integral, it has to have the same value. So these typical strips, as they accumulate, will get taken away from any progress we had made, positive progress, right? So from 0 to 5, we are sweeping out area, but then from 5 to 8, it's going to start decreasing that amount. All right, so, but we're always going to talk about areas as, positive values. So we'll call that A1 and call this A2. And there's really no such thing as negative area. So we're going to say A1 is greater than 0 and we're going to say A2 is greater than 0. Because it's still an area, it's still a region. You can't have really a negative area. So in terms of A1 and A2, what will this integral compute in terms of A1 and A2? How can you write expression with a1 and a2 that will equal what that integral will compute if you're following along? Yeah. Right. It's going to have the positive contribution of the area a1, but a negative contribution of the area a2. Again, we're going to consider areas just to be positive. There is no such thing as negative area. So what does that integral compute? It computes this. So it's really not, so we, we talked about integral as area. Well, it's really not area, to be precise. What is, what is integral really calculating? So it's like <coughs> difference of areas, or, or maybe net area. You could call it net area, or difference of areas. Anytime your function goes below the x-axis, it's going to carve out area that gets subtracted when you do the integral. Make sense? And that's consi exactly consistent with our interpretation of integral as accumulation and rate of change. Anytime the function was below, the rate of change was negative, and so our accumulation went down. So anytime you have the function goes below, you get an area, and that, that's, you're going to subtract that much area in the, in the total of finding that uh, value of that integral. So, diff so, so really, precisely, we say that integrals, in ge the geometric perspective, they calculate difference of areas, or net area. You only truly get area if that function stays positive for your whole interval, right? If it stays positive the whole time, then you, then you get an, an area. Okay, so what do we predict? We saw, thought maybe this is, what, maybe this is close to zero, or maybe negative. What, if A2 is greater than A1? 
All right, well, we've got the same antiderivative. Do it faster. So I think it was uh, 125 over, uh, no, it has actually plugged in. So it was at x, five halves x squared, x cubed, three. Again, the zero is gonna be zero. So what do we get? Five halves times 64 minus 64 times eight. Five twelve. Try to do that in my head. No, oh, got lucky. All right. So, what's the answer? So someone, so we crank that out. Five times sixty four over two. And behold, look. Negative 10 and 2 thirds. Negative 10 and 2 thirds. So, did we get a negative area? No. It's not that we got a negative area, it's just that the area carved out below the x axis from, in, in, from 0 to 8 was a bigger area than the area carved out above. So, the net area. Turned out to be negative, negative 10 and 2 thirds. That's how much bigger A2 is than A1. Okay, questions on that? Does it make sense? Okay. Really important concepts. Okay, so here we go. New one. See if you can. So without a graphing calculator, can you get a good enough sketch of these, of these curves, lines, and the region? Identify the region, and then we'll do our typical strip and add it up together. So without any grapher, graphing device, you should be able to get a sketch of this in a, couple, in a, in a minute or two. Yep. That's a comma. Yep. You got two things to work with. Actually, three things to work with here.
Okay, so with uh, two curves that we have to sketch, the region may not just pop, pop out at us, or whatever pops out at us might not be the right region, okay? So uh, in terms of graphing x plus y equals 6, two suggestions, y equals negative x plus 6, so you've got a y-intercept of 6 and a slope of negative 1, that's one way to do that. Or notice that you've got two intercepts, 0, 6, and 6, 0. You could just draw the line through those two, either way. And then y equals x cubed should be familiar. 1 half x cubed is just going to have all its y coordinates, 1 half of what it was before. So it's just going to kind of smush it vertically. So it's going to essentially be x cubed, okay? So here are those two. And now where is our region? So we want area bounded by those two curves on the y axis. Which, so make sure you identify the x, the y axis correctly, gives us this right here. Okay, so now we want that area, right? We want that area, so what are we going to do? Typical strip, no integral yet. So I'm going to just draw one strip that could be any of the strips, any of the strips, okay? So our typical strip okay, it's going to be base times height, just like before, base times height because it's a rectangle. What's the base? Base is the change in x. And so then this question, that height of that typical strip, is it an x-coordinate, a y-coordinate, a change in x, or a change in y? Now you should see that that thing is a change in y. Okay, so we're going to write that as y2 minus y, not delta y. Delta y would be uh, like the narrow, like the delta x meaning like the narrow dimension. So now I'm going to write that height as the difference y2 minus y1. But because I have delta x, I need to write the y2 minus y1 in terms of x. So what is y2? What's the y coordinate at the top? Of the y is 6 minus x, or negative x plus 6, right? That's the y2. What's y1? What's the y coordinate here at the bottom of the strip? 1 half x cubed. So this is an advantage of the typical strip. Any region that you have anywhere in the plane you can, if, if you're using, if you're using rectangular uh, elements, you can have uh, base times height. In this case, the base is delta x, and then we recognize that that height is just a change in y. It's y2 minus y1, where y2 is the 6 minus x, and the y1 is the negative 1 half x cubed. And so then, our area is going to equal the sum of all those. Typical strips, 6 minus x minus 1 half x cubed, that's the height, times the base is dx. Again, the dx is part of the map. It's the base, right? It's the base. <coughs> and then we say, where's the first typical strip? The first typical strip is the tallest one here on the left. See that? That's at x equals 0. Where's the last typical strip? It's this really short one here on the right. Well. We, we've got to figure out what that x-coordinate is. So it's the x-coordinate right at the intersection of those two. Where do those two intersect? Where they have the same y-coordinate. So that would be where 6 plus x equals 1 half x cubed. What is that? x equals is that 2. No, is that right? Eight. That's why. So it is right. Okay. So x equals two. So this is x equals two. So we're going to go from zero to two. And we're going to sum up all those strips, like the red one, all the way from zero to two. And that will be the area. Again, another easy integral. Do the red part on every problem.
Please, I'm begging you. See you Wednesday.